Hi there, I am Heather. I'm an anxiety coach and an imposter syndrome educator. And in this video, I'm going to give you, the empath, 10 ways that you can reduce your anxiety. So if you're not sure whether you're an empath or not, you're gonna to want to watch my other video first. It's gonna help you diagnose whether you are an empath and if so, how that affects your anxiety. But right now I've got 10 tips for you if you're definitely sure that you are an empath who is feeling anxiety. The first tip is that you're going to want to set boundaries. And this often involves saying no, just quite simply putting yourself first because self-care is incredibly important for everyone. But of course, it's very, very important for the empath who tends to take on too much and take on other people's feelings. So when you are saying no, that means that you know when to step away from situations. Uh, you know that a certain person may not be good for you. So you are just quite simply setting a boundary of no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not participating in that. The second tip for you is also about setting boundaries, but this is really about understanding your personal limits and honoring them. So let's give an example. Let's say perhaps you know that you can go to a gathering, a party with a lot of people, but that your max time that you can be there without getting overloaded from other people's emotions is two hours. You set that two hour limit. You probably communicate with the person who invited you over and you say, hey, I tend to get overwhelmed by a lot of people. So I definitely want to come to your gathering, but I'm going to have to leave after two hours just to really honor myself. And then you stick to it. You stay for two hours and then you leave. So this is the third tip. If you are really getting overloaded by someone else's emotions and it's making you feel anxious, you're going to want to ask yourself, wait a minute, is this anxiety mine or is it someone else's? And a tip off that you are absorbing somebody else's anxious state is when you notice like a really sudden change in your mood or your physical state, like around this other person. So I have a story that I think is amazing. <laughs> and this is going to illustrate this. I have an acquaintance who is like a hardcore empath. She was on a plane and the plane left from the gate and it was out on the tarmac waiting to take off and they got stuck on the tarmac. They couldn't go back to the gate because another plate, a plane had pulled in and they weren't allowed to take off for some reason. So they're just stuck on the tarmac for quite a long time. And my acquaintance all of a sudden started thinking, hey, I'm going to order a vodka. No, I'm going to order two vodkas. And uh, this person doesn't drink. She totally does not drink at all. And she realized, oh, my gosh, it's the guy next to me who is the one who wants to drink. He's so anxious from being on the tarmac and probably, you know, really didn't like to fly that she was picking up his anxious state so much so that she was the one who thought I'm going to order alcohol. It was a huge tip off for her, right? She doesn't drink. So if you notice this really sudden thing for you shift where you're feeling okay, and then all of a sudden you've got this anxious state and you're around somebody else, that is a huge tip off for you. Speaking of other people, if you are an empath, you know what an energy vampire is, okay? And so like it or not, we all have people around us that just suck our energy and empaths, unfortunately, are really like a beacon for energy vampires. So these people who most often it's like a subconscious thing, they got their stuff going on and they don't want it. So they'll sort of unload it onto this empath and then the empath takes on the other person's stuff. So with the energy vampire, you've just got to know that when you are feeling that sense that this person is, you know, sort of like energetically or emotionally taking advantage of you, and that is making you feel anxious because they're probably dumping off their anxious stuff on you, it is really smart to cut those people out of your life. Just straight up. I know it takes a lot of courage to do that. But if you are recognizing that you have a, you know, quote unquote friend who's really always doing this to you, that doesn't serve you. That's not a real friend. So that means that you just need to stand your ground and say, I'm not interacting with this person. 
if this does happen to be, you know, family member or coworker, uh, where you kind of can't cut them out of your life. Um, well, first of all, I would question whether or not you could cut a family member out of your life. And most people think they can't, but sometimes you do need to do that. But like a coworker, as an example, you probably don't have much control over that. Keep listening because some of the other techniques that I have uh, coming up are gonna help you with that. So I love this tip. It is a visualization technique. So if you know that you were going into a scenario of uh, lots of people, or you know you're going to be around someone that is challenging for you, that you know is going to be really draining or make you feel very anxious, what you're going to do is imagine that you have a glass wall that is between you and the other person that you are speaking to. So it's like you can imagine that your energy goes out through this glass wall your communication goes through it, but when their communication and emotions are coming to you, it's like, boop, they hit this invisible wall and it just bounces off of you and you don't absorb it. So if you do happen to pick up stuff that is not yours and you're feeling really anxious and you want to sort of get rid of that anxious state, what you can do is imagine the universal vacuum cleaner. So with the universal vacuum cleaner, you're going to imagine that all of that anxiety that isn't yours, all of that um, emotion that is just making you feel really gross. Imagine you have, you know, this energy field around you, this bubble, and you're going to imagine that this universal vacuum cleaner is sucking all of that anxious feeling, sucking all of that ickiness out of you and just pulling it out of you and like sending it off out into like the universe, right? It's just completely removed from you. And just keep imagining that universal vacuum cleaner it may take you a few minutes, but just keep imagining it's being pulled out of you until you feel better. So this is number seven, you are going to shield yourself. So this is another shielding sort of technique. And the basic idea is that you have some shape around your body. Um, you know, usually you're going to try and make this like a circle and that keeps you safe from the outside energies coming in. So you could sort of imagine it as like an egg shape, or you could also even do something like you have on like a Harry Potter cloak. It's like the invisibility cloak where you have on this protection mechanism so that it's like a little cocoon for you. And so when you are out again with a lot of people picking up their anxiety or you're with that challenging person, you just imagine that their stuff can't come through because you have this protection of this cocoon that you are in or this little cloak that you have on, and that is just blocking their stuff, okay? And so number eight, it is extremely important, again, for everyone, but especially in empaths, that to clear out your stuff, uh, clear out that anxiety, you need to get into nature really regularly. And this can be just a simple walk outside, you know, in your neighborhood on pavement or concrete, but I definitely would recommend if you can getting more into actual nature, nature, and this depends on where you're living. This might be the beach. This might be, you know, a forest or something like that, where you actually feel like you're removed from the city sort of hustle bustle of people where you're really just immersed in nature. And I would recommend this. I mean, at least once a week um, more if possible. So when you're recognizing that you have picked up things that are not yours, when you're anxious and it's not your feeling, this is the tip number nine, you're going to send it back. So it's really likely that probably, um, I don't know, 90% of your thoughts and emotions don't belong to you if you're an empath. And so if you just think of yourself as like a big giant sponge that has picked up other people's anxiety or other people's emotions, and that's making you feel anxious, if you can just imagine that you're sending that back out into the world, or you can imagine that you're sending that stuff that's not yours down into the earth and just ask for all the stuff to be cleared that's not yours and sending it out and sending it back down into the earth. This is a really great mechanism for you, particularly if you go into nature, like I said in tip number eight. So when you are out in nature, you can say, okay, I'm out in nature, nature, please clear out what is not mine. And then tip number 10, 
is spend time alone. I do have to tell you that my younger daughter, I have two daughters, my younger daughter is an empath. And so she recognizes, she's only 15 by the way, and because of my working with her has really uh, recognized a lot of times when she is getting overwhelmed and overloaded. And so when she is in those positions where she is out at school or she's a dancer and she's you know out dancing with the team, when she comes back, she knows that she needs to spend time alone. And so even though a lot of times I want to talk to her like, oh, what happened today sort of thing? Or what happened when you were dancing? She knows and I know that's not a good time for her. It's time for her to go to her room for a while and just really decompress and just be in her own space. And the time alone also goes all the way back to the boundary setting where you're saying no, like you're turning down things and not worrying about whether or not somebody thinks that you are being unsocial or not a good friend. And this is something that my daughter does as well, is she will, her friends will say, hey, come and do this with us. And a couple of her friends even came over and rang the doorbell and they're like, come out with us. And she was like, no, I can't. She just was really feeling overloaded that day. And I know it was really hard for her because her friends were like, come out with us, especially if you're a teenager, right? And she was just like, no, I can't do that. She really recognized that she needed to be alone that day. And so this is crucial for you to recognize where are you in your time and space and recognizing, do you need to be alone or not? If you do need to be alone, of course, you're spending some time with those sort of purging techniques that I mentioned, but also this is a really great time for you to do things that are more self-care oriented, like reading a really um, inspirational book or motivating book or something that you know isn't scary like a horror book or something which may not be the best for empaths uh, you know or meditating or journaling or just doing something that fills you up in that time alone so I hope that these 10 tips were really helpful to you of course like this video please comment below if you have your own tips for reducing your anxiety if you're an empath i would love to hear what you do that i may not have mentioned and of course subscribe to this channel for other great content about anxiety and imposter syndrome